while the block diagram helps you determine how you're going to build the system, the work breakdown structure determines the effort required. The Gantt chart is the tool that most people use to set deadlines and keep the project on schedule, to actual manage, actually manage your time, that most valuable of resources. Here's a Gantt chart that corresponds to the block diagram we saw earlier put together by a team. Let me focus on some features of this Gantt chart. Um, the horizontal axis that I just highlighted in yellow uh, corresponds to time. Each of these little ticks corresponds to a day. Um, the bigger ticks correspond to weeks or months. The vertical axis is organized by tasks. These tasks are taken directly from the work breakdown structure. So on the, the level two or level three work breakdown structure, this might be a task, this might be a task, and the subtasks on the deeper levels are given by these individual lines. Horizontal bars on the Gantt chart give the time allotted for each task, when it will begin and when it will end. We notice the horizontal bars are in fact color-coded um, by the person responsible. So by looking at a Gantt chart that's done well, not only do you know what you should be doing at any given period of time, you also know who's responsible for it. Um, and notice the colors match the block diagram, so there's this, this holistic vision for putting project management together. You can also, at any point in time, see who's going to be working and who isn't on a good Gantt chart. The person who's light green here has a lot more responsibilities at that vertical axis than any other person. Finally, one thing that sh should be obvious, but a lot of people really don't understand, or at least don't take deep into their heart, is that the end of the bar represents a deadline. This is when something is due. If you don't have your work done by the day that bar ends, the entire project needs to get shifted, the Gantt chart gets reorganized and changed, and you eat up a lot of additional time and other resources and meetings to sort of redo the project management and rethink about things. So be aware that once you make a Gantt chart, you have set yourself some very firm deadlines for getting things done. Finally, let's conclude this with talking about the project manager. Now we're getting into details of the specific class that I teach at Oklahoma State University. Um, but a project manager really helps facilitate all of this, makes the project flow, communicates deadlines with people, makes sure people, the engineers on the design team, as well as the customer and management, and anybody else involved in a design project, really understand where the project is. And one can think of the project manager as balancing the costs the schedules and the specifications. Um, in this class, the class that I teach, the project manager is responsible for documenting the team projects by, by creating management records, technical records, project records, and notes from various meetings. They organize regular meetings. They are responsible for archiving the project so if information is needed later, um, it can be found. They acquire things and facilitate the job of the engineers, and they attend demonstrations so they understand really sort of where the project is. Another person you may have um, on a project is a lead engineer. And this is somebody who has a technical big picture, unlike the big picture of the project manager that looks at the deadlines and getting the project to completion. A lead engineer may really understand the project in a technical holistic picture. Um, the lead engineer may research interconnections between blocks and the block diagram, make sure everything talks to one another, uh, obtains measurements of signals so they know that everything is up to spec, um, putting technical information on the block diagram so everybody knows their inputs and their outputs as the individual engineers work and design blocks. A lead engineer also can specify types and locations of connectors because you'll find that in an electronic project, connectors are going to be your biggest headache and there's a huge field of engineering devoted to choosing and designing connectors. Um, doing system integration demonstrations, your lead engineer often does your demonstrations, and of course writing the characteristics and the performance characterization sections of a data sheet when it comes time to communicate the final results of the project. So hopefully this has given you a, a large view of some of the useful tools available to you to manage a project and not only manage a project but really help explore the design space and understand the constraints of a project.